What is acquisition and payment cycle? The acquisition of goods and services includes the acquisition of such things as raw materials, equipment, supplies, utilities, repairs, and maintenance and research and development. So, there are three types of transaction in an acquisition cycle. So, the first one is acquisition of goods and services. The second one is cash disbursements. And the last one is purchase returns and allowance and also purchases discounts. Which are the relevant accounts or ledger related to acquisition and payment cycle? So, for the first one is account payable. Then, it is followed by raw material purchases, property, plans and equipment, repair expenses, cash in bank, purchases, return and allowance, purchase discounts, manufacturing expenses, and the last one is selling and administrative expenses. To know more, let us see on the next slide. Next, let us see from this mind map, what are the relevant accounts or ledger related to acquisition and payment cycle. So for the first one is acquisition of goods and services. The ledgers that are involved are raw material purchases, property, plants and equipment, and also prepaid expenses. Meanwhile, for cash disbursement is only one, which is cash in bank. For purchase returns and allowance is also one ledger, which is purchases, returns and allowance. And for purchase discounts, there are also have one ledger only, which is purchase discount. A little bit addition from the previous slide, there is also for acquisition of goods and services, there are some other extra ledgers which is manufacturing expenses, control, accounts, which they also have subsidiary accounts for repair and maintenance, taxes, supplies, fridge and utilities. Next, we also have selling expenses control accounts, which what are their subsidiary accounts is commissions, travel, delivery expenses, repairs and also advertising. And also the last one is administrative expenses control account where the subsidiary accounts are supplies, office travels, legal fee, auditing fees and also taxes. Discussing about payment and acquisition cycle, so what is the objective of payment and acquisition cycle? The first objective of payment and acquisition cycle is to make sure all purchase transaction has been occurred, is recorded and there is no misstatement. The second one is to make sure any payables that came from credit purchases are recorded without any misstatement. Since we already see the objective of payment and acquisition cycle, how about we see the process for payment and acquisition cycle? So, the process for payment and acquisition cycle started with purchase requisition. A little additional information regarding to purchase requisition is Purchase requisition is a document that an employee within our organization creates to request a purchase of goods or services. Next, we would like to see on authorized acquisition of goods or services where the managers give authorization regarding to the acquisition of goods or services. Next, we have also received the goods and services, then only the transition will be recorded in the accounting books. After the transaction is recorded in the accounting books, they will have also bill payment authorization before we will go to cash disbursement. Since we already know what are the objective and the cycle regarding to acquisition goods or services, how about we see on the management decisions regarding to acquisition goods or services. So, for the first management decision regarding to acquisition goods and services is occurrence. Occurrence is where the manager assists that the acquisition of purchase transaction has made place. What are the audit objective? The, object, the audit objective is to check whether all acquisitions are actually recorded. What are the audit procedures? The first audit procedure is test of control we are, where we are going to inspect all the documents regarding to the acquisition in order to ensure that the acquisition is authorized. The second one is substantive control. Substantive control is inspection on documents will be made by approving or validate selected transactions from the purchase journal based on the supporting documents presented. Next, we would like to look on the internal control procedure regarding to occurrence. So for the first one, 
is vouchers for payments of acquisition should be supported by proper documents such as purchase order, receiving reports and also vendor's invoice. Managers should set up a procedure in order to validate a transaction regarding to acquisition such as stating the required document to validate the acquisition. The next one is on possible misstatement. What are the possible misstatement? The possible misstatement is acquisition or purchase transaction does not occur during the period but there is record regarding the transaction. The next management assertion is completeness. What is completeness? Completeness is existing acquisition or purchases transaction are recorded. The audit objective is to check whether all acquisitions are recorded completely. So how about the audit procedure? There are two audit procedures which is test of control where we are going to examine the bank reconciliation and observe the preparation. Meanwhile, the second one is substantive control where we are going to trace from a file of receiving reports and file of vendors invoice to the acquisition journal. The internal control procedure for completeness is purchase orders, receiving report, vouchers, a pre-number, and accounted for. If a number has been recorded twice or there is a missing number from the list, it will be easy to figure out the problem since we have a pre and accounted for vouchers. What are the possible misstatement? The possible misstatement is financial statement would be overstated. The next management decision is accuracy. Accuracy is recorded purchases are correctly recorded accurately. The objective is recorded purchases are correctly recorded for the amount of goods and services received. What are the audit procedures? They also have two audit procedures which is test of control and substantive control. For test of control, we will examine proper approval for purchase requisition and purchase order. The second one is we are going to examine indication of internal verification for recording purchase transaction. Meanwhile, for substantive control, we will approve detail of supplier's invoice to related purchase requisition, purchase orders and goods received notes. And we will also trace supplier's invoice to recorded purchases. Regarding to internal control procedure, we will have approved price, terms and discounts and we will also have internal verification of calculations and amounts of suppliers invoice and for, for possible misstatement, there are errors in recording the purchase price. The fourth management assertion is posting and summarization. Acquisition transactions are correctly included in the accounts payable and inventory master file and correctly summarized. The audit objective for posting and summarization is to check whether the acquisition transactions are correctly included in the accounts payable and inventory master files and are correctly summarized. For the audit procedure, there also have two audit procedures which is test of control and substantive control. So for test of control is examine indication of internal verification and also examine initials on general ledger accounts indicating comparison. Meanwhile for substantive control is test clerical accuracy by footing the journals and also we are going to trace postings to general ledger and account papers and also inventory master files. The internal control procedure regarding to posting and summarization is Accounts payable master file contents are internally verified and account payable master file or trial balance totals are compared with general ledger balance. For the possible misstatement is there is understatement of creditors account. For the fifth one is classification. Classification is acquisition and purchase transaction are correctly classified. The objective is to check whether all acquisition and purchase transactions are classified correctly. What are the audit procedures? There also have two audit procedures which is test of control and also substantive control. So for test of control, we will examine procedures manual and chart of accounts and we will also examine indication of internal verification. Meanwhile, for substantive control, we will compare classification with chart of accounts by referring to vendors invoice cessation. Next, we will like to see on the internal control procedure. The internal control procedure are some control include adequate approval from a supervisor for journal entries and adequate list of chart of accounts with description of each of them. And also, we will compare balancing with budgeted amount. 
What's the possible misstatement? The possible misstatement is classification is statement of unrecorded accounts. Last but not least, we also have timing as the management decisions regarding to acquisition of goods and services. Timing is transactions are recorded on the correct date. The objective is to check whether all acquisitions are recorded on the correct date. Meanwhile, for the audit procedure, we also have two audit procedures which is test of control and also substantive control. For test of control, we will examine procedures manual and observe whether and record when this invoice exists. And also, we will examine indication of internal verification. Meanwhile, for substantive control, we will compare this of receiving reports and when this invoice with this in the acquisition journal. Meanwhile, for the internal control procedure is procedures required recording transition as soon as possible after the goods and services have been received and also the dates are initially verified. Meanwhile, for the possible misstatement is unrecorded or non-existent accounts or misstatement. The first one are occurrence. Occurrence is where the manager asserts that all cash disbursement recorded has been occurred. All the objectives are to ensure whether the cash disbursement transaction recorded has been received. All the procedures are test of control to observe the separation of duties and independent reconciliation of bank balances. Substantive control to trace the whole transaction starting from cash payment journal to bank statement. The internal control procedure are managers ensure that there is an adequate separation of duties between handling cash and maintaining account payables record. Supporting documents are examined and approved before the check is signed. The possible misstatement that can occur is overstated liabilities due to incorrect record of cash reimbursement. The second one is completeness. Completeness is existing cash disimbursement transactions are completely recorded. Our objective is to check whether cash disimbursement transactions are completely recorded. Audit procedure, test of control, account for sequence of checks and examine bank reconciliation. Substantive control, trace good received notes or suppliers invoice to entries in purchases journal and accounts payable ledger. The internal control procedure are all checks are pre-numbered so that any cash disimbursement can be easily recorded. Appoint staff that does not involve in recording cash payments and custody of assets to reconcile the bank statement. The possible misstatement that can occur is financial statement of receipt. The third one is accuracy. Accuracy is recorded cash disimbursement are correctly recorded accurately. Our objective is to ensure that recorded cash disbursement transactions are accurate. Audit procedure, test of control, to examine indication of internal verification, to examine bank reconciliations and observe their preparation. Substantive control, to compare cancelled checks and electronic bank records of disbursement with the related acquisition journal and cash disbursement journal entries. The internal control procedure are to ensure calculations and amount reported are internally verified. The bank reconciliation is prepared monthly by an independent person. The possible misstatement that can be occurred is liabilities overstated or understated. For the next one is posting and summarization. For the audit objective is to ensure all cash disbursement transactions are correctly included in the accounts payable master file and are correctly summarized. For the audit procedure, the first one is test of control. The test of control is to examine indication of internal verification and to examine initials on the general ledger accounts indicating compression. For the substance controls are the test critical accuracy by footing the journals and tracing postings to general ledger and accounts payable and inventory master files. The internal control procedure are accounts payable master files Contents are internally verified and accounts payable master file or trial balance totals are compared with general ledger balance. The possible misstatement is cash disbursement payments are recorded incorrectly or not recorded. Other than that, classification is also one of the cash disbursement. For the audit objective is to check whether all cash disbursement are correctly classified. The audit procedure 
for the first one is test of control test of control is to examine procedures menu and chart of accounts and to examine indication of internal verification for the substantive control is to compare classification with chart of accounts by referring to vendors invoice cassation the internal control procedure are to adequate chart of account is used and accounts clarification are internally verified the possible misstatement is failure to record cash disbursement from all accounts involved the last one is timing the audit objective is to check whether all cash disbursement are recorded on the correct date for the audit procedure the first one is test of control test of control or to examine procedures manual and observe whether a recorded check exists and to examine indication of internal verification. For the substantive control, or to compare dates on cancer check or electronic bank records with the cash disbursement journal and to compare dates on cancer check or electronic bank records with the bank cancellation dates. The internal control procedures are procedures require recording situation as soon as possible after the goods and services have been received and the dates are internally verified. And the possible misstatement is early or late recognition cash receipt. Since all the acquisition and payments are typically flow through the account payable, therefore the account payable need to perform the test of the date. This is to check whether the account payable balance is fairly stated and properly disclosed. So the first test for account payable is the data in. The audit objective is to check whether account payable in the account payable list agree with related master file and the total is correctly added and agree with the general ledger. By the test of control is react or reuse the computer to total the account payable list. Next is by trace the total general ledger and trace the individual vendor invoice to master file for names and amounts. After that, for the audit evidence is by referring the vendor's invoice, account paper master file and the vendor statement. Next is assistant. The audit objective for assistant is to check whether account payable in the account payable list is exist. By referring to the internal control, the recorded account payable is supported by the supplier's invoice and goods received notes. Uh, besides this, the test of detail need to be performed. This is where the test need to compare the balance with supplier statement, check supplier's invoice and good receipt notes. For the test of control for existing, the auditor needs to select sample from the creditor list and creditor's confirmation. However, the possible misstatement will be occurred when the amount of balance are wrongly recorded and unrecorded. The third existence of account payable is completeness. The audit objective of completeness is to check whether the existing account payable are included in the account payable list. We will see by the internal control first, it states that the purchase order, receiving report and voucher should be free and number and accounted for. For the test of control, is for a sample of good receipt note that is related to the supplier's invoice, uh, entries in the purchase journal, and credit ledger need to be traced. For the test of detail, the auditor will investigate for any supplier name that shown on last year's payable listing but do not have a balance showing in this uh, year listing of balance. Uh, then, they also need to review the date after invoice and payment to ensure they have been provided for the at the year end as appropriate. After that, they need to select a sample of good received notes um, to the year end and include it in year end tables and ensure that the goods are included in year inventory. However, the possible misstatement in this case can be materially misstated and related control procedure cannot prevent or detect any misstatement. The fourth is the accuracy, where the audit objective is to check whether account payable in the account payable list are accurate. Some goals 
to the another types of account payable, a few tests need to be performed. By internal control, the auditor must examine suppliers' invoice and good receive notes. By test of detail, it should trace from a comparable list to suppliers' invoice and statement and confirm to the comparable and precise slash and useless amount. For the next of test of control, the auditor needs to select sample from the creditors list and the same creditors confirmation. However, the possible misstatement will happen where the amount record in the account payable is understood. Under then that is account payable is classification. The audit objective is to check whether the account payable in the account payable are correctly cl classified. By referring to internal control, the auditor should follow proper policy and procedure to ensure account payable are recorded at fair value. By doing the test of detail, they need to obtain list of the individual balance from the payable ledger, check the cash and agree to the total to trade payable figure in the draft financial statement. The test of control is a review in a list and a master file for related, related party notes or other interest bearing liabilities, long term payable and debt balance. It also should examine the, ev the evidence of approval of usually trade term and discount. However, problem will occur when they wrongly classify the name of account payable. Finally, this account payable is obligation. The objective is to check whether the company has obligation to pay the liabilities included in the account payable. By internal control, the record the account payable which is supported by supplier's invoice and good service notes. By test of control is exam vendor statement and confirm account payable. Then, by test of detail, uh, circularize a sample of account payable to confirm the balance at the end of the year. Compare the balance with supplier statement and check supplier invoice and good receive notes. However, double payment for a supplier invoice can be occur. Now, let's move to the case study. We choose the uh, case study from December 2020. 2019. Let's to explore. First, first witness is a weekly basis is used for check deposit in the bank. The impact is due to time lapses and the volume of the check at the end of the week. There are is a change that the check will get misplaced. Suggestion is to prevent mishandling. Change the system for deposit check into the bank to a daily basis. Next, the second possible internal control witness is there is no segregation of duties as Dayang is responsible for the entire check handling process, including the update of the cash receipt journal. So, what will be happen to the company is Dayang may have discovered fraud and alter the way check were recorded. To overcome this problem, um, they need to segregate duties among staff so that it could be avoid the fraud. For the third one, the possible internal control witness is Dayang has been given permission to open mail containing checks and to record checks without supervision. And the impacts of the witness to the company is Dayang could have altered the recording by taking the checks, especially cash checks, for her own use. The suggestion to rectify the weakness is to appoint another supervisor mainly for the purpose to monitor every action taken by the young when she opened the mails containing checks and to complete the recording of the checks. And for the next one, the possible internal control witness is the information on the payment instruction forms 
was not verified by an officer before they were submitted to the bank because they were signed by the signatories. And the impact of the witness to the company is the possibility of the checks becoming lost due to time gaps and the volume of checks at the end of the week. For the suggestion to rectify the witness, is make verification on payment instruction from to the account first, which is Shamil, before make verification from Ernie. Lastly, for witness is for this case study, it is statement of bank reconciliation we prepare on the bi monthly basis. The impact was is the impact of the witness is because the two month gap is uh, so large and long. Bank reconciliation statement should have been prepared on a monthly basis. Suggestion is prepare bank reconciliation statement on a monthly basis instead of a bi-monthly basis to simply simply the account re reconciliation process of guarantee the accuracy of bank reconciliation statement. Okay, thank you. Do you have any question before we go?